everybody to the Women's Travel Club Travel Talk Show. And today we have a special guest with us and we're going to talk about polar expeditions. Um, so I'd like to introduce uh, Laura. Laura is from Cork Expeditions. Um, she will tell us a bit about herself, but I can tell you that she was born and raised in France. She worked uh, initially for the National Museum of Natural History in Paris. Uh, now she is a business development representative in for Cork, and she works um, in their office. But she was uh, on, in the field, part of the expedition team. Um, and she worked as a translator and linguist guide on board of a few different ships from 2017 and 2018. Uh, she has done lots of ex uh, expeditions, which she's going to tell us a bit about, including Antarctica and Spitsbergen. Um, and I know we're going to talk a lot about Spitsbergen and the Arctic today. So I'm very, very happy to have Laura. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking time and joining us and Thank kind of you. teaching Hi, everybody Thank about you. what to expect in the Arctic. Uh, before Laura gets started and we kind of delve into this, I just wanted to put a little poll out there. I'm wondering um, what everybody's uh, interest in polar expeditions is. So um, it's just a little poll I'm going to launch and everybody can vote. And just let me know kind of what about a polar expedition has interested you? What made you kind of uh, sign on today and want to learn about this? I voted, I voted. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think I have to, I have to vote as well. <laughs> so do you have, uh, when is the Arctic? You have Arctic, uh, the Arctic planned, isn't that right, Mayor? Yes, uh, we have it planned for May, end of May. Of 2021? No, yes. Excellent. Yes. Very cool. Okay. Looks okay. Like pretty much everybody has voted. Three of you didn't vote. Um, but, and it looks like 40%. Uh, so the majority are wanting a new and unusual destination, uh, which I love. That's, you know, very typical, I think, of a lot of our travelers because a lot have really done a fair bit of traveling. I've seen a lot and to yeah, just we have do the have. opportunity to see something new and different is I think uh, always a big draw. And we have a lot of ladies that are really, really well traveled. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then we have 30% uh, who want to see wildlife. Yay! Because, you know, that's always my thing. So I'm so glad that I see that 30% that want to go out and see the wildlife with me. Um, <laughs> But thank you. So I am going to turn over everything to Laura now and she can kind of take you through what to expect on a polar expedition and in the Arctic. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, oh, I hope you can still see my screen. Yes. yes. I okay. Yep. I I think it, it has a tendency to freeze at some point, so hopefully we will be able to it will be able to work. Uh, do you see the screen get ready to embark with us? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So because this is all uh, this is all about embarking for an adventure. So hi everyone. So my name is Laura. I apologize for the French accent, as Marianne was saying. I am originally from France, so hopefully uh, my accent will not be too uh, strong. Uh, so why, uh, why traveling um, with Quark and why traveling to the polar region? So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Quark expeditions, what we do, who we are. So Quark is actually 
I've been in the, in the industry, on the travel industry since um, 29 years. So it's been a little while. We've been, uh, we're considered as the leader in polar adventure. Uh, for instance, uh, Quark has been the first company to take um, passengers to the North Pole. Uh, and then we still do it today. We're still, um, we still go there. We've been doing this since 1991. We've been the first to do circumnavigation of the Arctic, the first to do circumnavigation of Antarctica. So we really have like um, a pioneer spirit. Um, and our goal is basically to take uh, the, the people, passengers, uh, that to travel with us to the most remote region of the planet. So what we do, we are polar only. We don't go anywhere else in the world, just to Antarctica and then the Arctic. So Antarctica is at the bottom of the planet. Uh, so everyone is like, sure. And the Arctic is at the top of the planet uh, with the North Pole. Um, so as I was mentioning, uh, our goal is really to take everyone to the most uh, remote region. Uh, we uh, plan like very unique itineraries. Uh, we have, uh, we're considered to have the best expedition staff in the world. Uh, and then we are well uh, known for our engagement toward uh, sustainability and um, a responsible tourism. So going to an expedition with us is basically going uh, with uh, people who know best who know those region, who've been there for like many years. Uh, and then on, under, on an average, our expedition leaders um, uh, have uh, been to the polar expedition about 140 times, most oh of them more than 200 times. So, so they are well, they know every single pieces, every single part of this region. So oh this is basically the best, yeah, it's a, the best way to go is in the safest way as well. So they uh, seriously love it. Sorry, I've got a giant dog head with big dog breath blowing at me. Go away. Oh. Wow. 200 times. Oh, I think Laura might be a bit frozen. Yeah, I think so. Laura, you're frozen, so if you can still hear us, stop. Talking. Let's see if it can unfreeze. Not the best technically, eh? Oh, maybe, maybe. Was it just my mic? My uh. Oh. Oh, oh I think. I think she's she's left, and she'll probably try and come back in. Maybe we I just lost that. her no. briefly. Can you believe? Like two hundred times over two hundred polar expeditions, like. That's some serious devotion to that region. Yes. Like, wow. I mean, you've I, been... Uh, oh, go I ahead. Yes. Yeah. Model my coat while we're waiting. Yes, I think that's a great <laughs> idea. One of the things, when you travel with Quark, you get a parka that you get to keep. And the parka is probably the best parka I've ever had or coat. Um, it's very heavy, so you probably don't want to wear it to the mall, but it's um, <laughs> excellent. So it's got yeah, Polar Expeditions on the back, nicely branded. It's this beautiful yellow color. They're all this beautiful yellow color. They have great fluorescent bands on them, so if you're walking your dog at night, they're oh, yeah. excellent. Reflective. Is it like reflective tape, kind of? Kind of, yeah. It's just reflective -y, shiny. They have these little pouches that you actually put your room key in, and they scan you on and off the ship when you're going on off the Clever. ship for your yes. little expeditions. Um, I haven't found a use for this here yet, but, you know, maybe going grocery shopping, I won't have to you know, even touch. I can just, like, lean over and tap. Touch yeah, do the, do the tap and lean. <laughs> Shame it's, shame it's not to any, um, maybe can we put it to double purpose with any of our amusement park visits? Could that be like your lanyard? Oh, it, yeah, but I think it'd be too hot. It's very hot. It's very thick. So it does have an outside, so the outside coat, and it has this handy little inside coat, which is like a puffy coat. Nice. Um, also very nice. 
it's got cork on it. Um, just your average kind of coat with zippers. Um, what else can I tell you about the coat? And it has, this is really cool. So when you're out walking and you get too hot, you can actually put the coat on like a backpack. Oh, no way. And just carry it with you. Oh, that's so that pretty cool. Can, I'm no, modeling perfect. the coat for by <laughs> and uh and Marianne that uh, liner zips into it does it I yes see the liner yeah. zips in and this coat I'm not gonna do it because it will take me too long to sort it out but once everything's all together it folds up into this tiny little package and it all fits inside the hood so when you're bringing it home it's super easy to to fit in there see there's people wearing them uh -huh. and, and, and you have your coat all right, I see Laura's back. Hooray. Yes, uh, my internet is like drop you a me? Yes. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so let me make sure you have access to my screen again. All right. You see a cruise vs expedition slide. Yes. Okay, so apologize for that. My internet is just a very, very bad at the moment. Oh, no. um, so I was saying, what, uh, what is the difference between a cruise and an expedition? So with a cruise, um, most likely we're talking about like big uh, boat uh, where uh, people sometimes can uh, get off their boat, but uh, not everyone at the same time. So no one, like no, no, people don't have the same like chances to see things. Uh, and versus an expedition. So an expedition is take place on a small expedition ship usually, uh, and then going with a small expedition ship, we are able, like we do at Quark, to bring everyone outside at the same times. And then there is really an experience outside. So the goal is, yes, to spend a great time on board, to have an amazing onboard experience, but the real goal is really to experience what is happening outside of the ship. Uh, what is the wildlife? What can I do? What can I see? Uh, hiking, activities, zodiac cruising. So it's really to, to experience the region, not to see it from a balcony or um, through a window, but really live it, uh, go there, explore, uh, um, and then really like experience what, uh, what the region has to offer. So that's really like the main difference between cruise and expeditions. And then of course, aquatic expeditions, we do expeditions. Um, so your voyage uh, to the Arctic. So I'm going to talk, as Maria mentioned, I'm going to talk mainly about uh, the voyage that is going to be happening next year. So in 2021, on the departure of uh, 23rd of May. Uh, so we are going to go to uh, the, what we call Spitsbergen. So where is Spitsbergen? So you can see on the map, it's pretty high. Uh, in the Arctic Ocean. So the Arctic is a run an ocean. It's a big region of the, of the world. Uh, it does include Russia, it does include Svalbard, Greenland, Canada. And so this Svalbard is uh, an archipelago where you see on the map, and it's owned uh, by Norway. And Spitsbergen is the largest island in this Svalbard archipelago. So that's the destination uh, where we're going to go next year. The trip starts actually in Norway, in Oslo. So we meet everyone, the whole group in Oslo for a pre-night that is included uh, in the expedition. Uh, that is uh, something we call transfer package. So it's, it's a feature made uh, for everyone to be able to access the region in like very simple way, basically. Uh, and then so it's going to be uh, free of charge and this is going to be especially for the partnership uh, with a woman's um, travel club. Okay, so we meet everyone in Oslo. Uh, we have a pre-night at the Radisson Blue Hotel right at the airport. So it's super easy. Uh, there's actually no need for transfer. You get off, the, uh, off your plane, you grab your luggage. The hotel is just right there. Uh, you can also spend an evening in Oslo. There is a train, I uh, did that uh, two years ago. There's a train that goes to the downtown, so it's super easy to go. And then in the next morning, 
we are boarding a charter flight for the destination and so Longyearbyen you see on the map is the capital of the Spitsberg um, and so we all have uh, some time to visit Longyearbyen uh, when you arrive, uh, you will pass through the seed boat that is well known around the world. It's the place where all the seeds in the world are kept into a very cold place. Oh, yes. It's quite cold, so sometimes it's open, sometimes not. If you're, if you're uh, lucky, it might be open, but there will be some time to visit downtown of Longyearbyen, which is really small and really cute. Mm -hmm. and that we embark for an expedition called Spitsbergen Explorer, uh, capital, wildlife capital of the Arctic, and this is a 12 days expedition. So what is it about, what is about, about Spitsbergen? So Spitsbergen is the kingdom, the realm of the polar bear. So there's more polar bear uh, in the Spitsberg than human beings. Uh, traveling in May in Spitsbergen, because uh, the expedition is at the end of May, very beginning of June, is actually one of the best time to go. Why? So the reason is it's because this is like spring, so we'll have a lot of ice around the island. The polar bears need the ice to hunt the seals. And so the more ice we have, the more chances we have to see the bears. We're going to be aboard a ship, so seeing the bears from the ship is actually the best way to see them, the best way to spot them, so that's why it's one of the best periods to go. May is also, uh, so I was mentioning spring, so this is a great time. There's like tons of little flowers, arctic flowers in the tundra, so it's actually really, really beautiful. Um, so you'll see on some pictures. So this is a map of the expedition we will uh, try to uh, attempt. This is really to give an idea of the itinerary. Basically, an expedition is also taking advantage of the weather, of the ice, and then of whatever nature has to offer. So the itinerary might change a little bit depending on the ice. Um, 12 days expedition is actually a great, uh, a great lift of time to attempt the circumnavigation of the Spitsbergen Island. So we might have a chance if uh, the ice allows us to go uh, through uh, the little passage and maybe a circumnavigation will be possible. I was lucky enough to, uh, to do the circumnavigation on my trip two years ago. Um, so that's a possibility. So this is right, really to give you an idea of like where we're gonna go. So most likely a little bit of south of the island, north, and in the northeast um, um, area of the Spitsbergen Island. We're gonna go a little bit into details of like why can I see and do in Spitsbergen. I'm gonna show you a few pictures. This is really about nature at its purest and about wildlife. Um, so I was mentioning wildlife, a lot of wildlife. The, this is like the perfect first expedition in the Arctic for every, anyone that has never been there, basically. So as I was mentioning, polar bears. Polar bear is really the goal. Uh, the one thing to know about the Spitsberg in May is it's like, it's gonna be quite uh, sun uh, with the midnight sun, even in the middle of the night. So our team is gonna be on, uh, you know, um, in the bridge looking out for bears. So we are not gonna miss any occasion, even if it's like three or 2 a.m. in the morning, we'll make sure to make an announcement that everyone is aware that a bear is at sight. Um, I actually really like this picture because this picture was taken a couple of years ago by a passenger. So this passenger was not an expert in photography. Um, and then this is really to show everyone that it's possible to make a great picture even if you don't know anything about photography. It's really about, you know, be there at the right moment. And then when you see your first bear for the first time, it's actually a very emotional moment. Um, like, I remember my moment, uh, we were into a zodiac, and then people with me were crying. It's very, like, a lot of emotion. Uh, it's you, it might sound a little bit cliche when I'm talking, uh, you know, when I'm saying it loud, it's really a very unique moment that gets you and then you really come back 
different uh, after that. It's really, it's uh, yeah, very unique and a lot of emotion for that. Um, the Spitzberg, it's also wonderful um, uh, land to see seals, but also to see walrus. So the walrus is actually uh, the second king um, in the in the Spitzberg. So there's going to be a lot of occasion uh, to see uh, those beautiful animals. They are they are really huge. They live in groups, and it's also like a beautiful moment every time we uh, we encounter them. Um, whales. So whales are all around. Uh, humpback whales um, for most um, most of the species. Uh, it might be a chance to see some beluga's as well. It happens. Blue whale. It's really rare. If you see blue whale uh, anywhere else in the world, play lotto immediately. It's very rare, but it does happen sometimes. Um, we also uh, so often see uh, the reindeer. So the reindeer of the Spitzberg is actually a very unique species. They are very short reindeer, and then this species only lives in the Spitzberg. Um, and I, I put, I don't know if there are some like, birders, um, people that love the birds uh, around here, but it's a wonderful destination for the birds. So like the puffins, uh, like the guillemot, uh, here on the picture, you have some Arctic terns. Um, we also spot the Arctic foxes. Um, they are very uh, shy but beautiful animal. Um, often we also see Arctic ours. That uh, does happen. So a lot of wildlife. Uh, we check the list every day to make sure we see them all. Uh, but it's definitely a destination where I encourage everyone to bring binoculars. Uh, the binoculars are going to be your best friends uh, in the Spitzberg. So we're going to talk a little bit about the off-ship experience and then the daily adventure. So as you see on the picture here, uh, we are using Zodiac. So Zodiacs are our best friends to go around. They are very easy um, to, um, to drive, to get in. Uh, we'll have our staff um, at the gangway to help everyone to get on board the Zodiac. It's really super easy, very stable. Uh, and then as you can see in this picture, it's really like, yeah, you feel very small in those polar uh, environments. It's the best way to explore anything that is happening at sea versus is like marine wildlife or the birds like on this picture as, as well, like the, uh, the walrus. Oh, wow. It's like being on safari. Yeah. It's definitely our best uh, best way to come closer to uh, huge uh, glaciers and icebergs. Also, keeping a distance um, at any time, safety first. Definitely, uh, it's definitely the best way to to feel like really small into this wonderful nature. Yeah. Another thing we're going to do uh, in this Pittsburgh is hiking. So there is a hiking group for everyone. For those who actually don't want to walk that much, maybe just half an hour, one hour. Uh, we have groups for two hours. And we also have groups for people who absolutely want to do like four hours hike. Um, so we are providing uh, the trekking poles. So no need to bring, uh, to bring those. They are like included. And uh, hiking is also a great way to get closer to the wildlife, like this one on the spectrum uh, with the reindeer or with the walrus as well. Um, Spitsburg is also a great destination for culture, history. Um, this was like, um, there's a huge history about whaling. Uh, lots of whaling happened in the 17th um, and 18th centuries. Uh, and so our guides are always here uh, to explain, to interpret uh, the remains or the runes or uh, what is happening. Sometimes we find like whale bones on the floor uh, coming from this like history uh, and background. Uh, so uh, they are going to be here on the spot with everyone, uh, with the group and all passengers to explain uh, the history of the region as well. And um, it's also, um, this picture was actually taken from my expedition. Um, and uh, this is also to show that even with like a forming and packed ice, we are able to get into it with our expedition ship and then to, um, to get closer to uh, the sea ice. 
So this picture was taken, um, we were at degree 82 degrees uh, latitude, basically, so which is 800 kilometers from the North Pole. So this was really, really cool, really intense uh, experience as well. And I believe that's a big difference too, when you see cruise companies that go to the Arctic and they're not ice rated, you can't get very close to the land and so they're not getting off the ship they're not seeing polar bears they're not because the polar bears are on the ice close to the land and so that makes a big difference of the the ice rating of the ship that you go on absolutely absolutely so crews like basically they will just like go around and then you will see everything from far away um, most of the cruise ship actually don't have the permit to uh, to get uh, into the landing sites. So people stay on board the ship. Whereas if you go with expedition uh, and then experienced people that have the permit, you are allowed uh, to go on land. Uh, so that's why it's very important. So it's not really not the same experience, especially like with our, our ship. I'll talk about the ship a little bit later, um, but the ship you're going to be on it's basically uh, a polar class 1A. So it's the polar class right under an icebreaker. So it's really possible to get into forming ice, uh, pancake ice, and really close to the sea ice forming. So it makes very, like the difference, like the experience really like different. And also this is why um, in May, there is not a lot of like, uh, cruise um, because they just they just don't have the ability uh, to go uh, in 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 this time of the year because of the ice. Um, so that's why May it's such a great time because um, with a ship with a small expedition ship that has the hull that is reinforced uh, for us it's like it's very easy to go and then to get so close to the ice and to the wildlife. Nice. Those uh, those four pictures are coming from my own expedition. Uh, so that was actually very end of May uh, in 2018. So about the same period of time. Um, so uh, I didn't take them all. I took uh, the walrus and then uh, the forming high kick ice. And then the two, um, the two other pictures were taken by our photograph on board, uh, Dave Meron. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a great, great pleasure to, for me to see this picture again. It's a great memory. And this is really to show that, um, that yeah, every expedition is different and uh, very easy to spot the wildlife uh, in, this, uh, in this region and to, in the beauty as well. So we're gonna talk a little bit about other options. Um, so in this picture, you see everything that is included. So what's included? Uh, so photography is included, lectures and presentation from our staff, zodiac cruising, uh, hiking and also what we call the polar plunge. Um, so I don't know if you, you did it in Antarctica, Marianne, but everyone basically. <laughs> has I did not do it, but like everybody, I felt like when I didn't do it, it was like, oh, yeah, it's like something like 93% of the people on board did it. And I can tell you though, everybody's look was like before they jumped in as they were jumping in versus the look of when they hit the water oh. <laughs> it was like so <laughs> they were so like yeah like this like all like ah! and then they hit the water and all of a sudden this look of panic stretched their face like, exactly <laughs> yeah, like, exactly <laughs> it's gonna be the the shortest jump in your life um, <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, some, some crazy people uh, like to put a like, you know, swimsuit or like this lady, this lady, you know, not even a swimsuit, but just jump into the icy and polar waters. We have the doctor on board, the whole team is there just in case, but it's always a great pleasure and a great moment of fun uh, to do that. Um, great way to defibrillate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, you are getting tenures in, in two seconds. I highly recommend it to everyone. Um, so all of those are included, uh, and then I uh, another option that is not included, um, but it's a wonderful thing to do. It's supporting excursion. So this is for uh, people who wants to know what it's like to paddle into the polar region. It's a two-hour activity. No need to be an expert. Is a sit on top kayak. 
uh, so you're going to go uh, uh, by two, so two people. Um, it's, it's super easy. The guide is there. So I just wanted to mention it just in case every, like some, some people will be interested in doing that. Otherwise, there is an experience for everyone. You can uh, join an expedition if you are very active looking for adventure or if you actually actually don't look you know after you don't you're not looking to do like you know big hikes you just want to experience what it's like to be there you know to reflect and then to go your own path that is really okay so there's really an adventure and an experience for everyone and we're going to talk a little bit about the expedition and then what it's uh, so the first thing that is included is the whole uh, leadership uh, program uh, with our staff, our expedition staff, our guides, scientists, and our expedition leader. Uh, so we are well known to have the best ratio. We have one guide for seven passengers. Um, we are uh, basically um, polar only. So all of our um, guides are only polar. So some of them are historians, some of them are biologists, some of them are glaciologists, um, uh, ornithologists. So they all focus on polar region only. Uh, so that's a, that's, that's a great thing. And then also we have like a, you know, a, a family spirit. Um, there is like no dress code on board. Uh, everyone like come as, you, come as you are. And also our guides uh, all spend their meals on board with everyone, with all the passengers. We are the only company that does this, that do not, see, that do not separate um, uh, the staff and then the passengers. And it's like, I, this is a really something like a moment I really enjoyed when I was a guide, is really to spend my meals, my lunch and my dinner with everyone. It's just like such a great moment of like, you know, you share stories. Yeah, um, from a passenger point of view, it was like all of a sudden you have, a, a guide sitting with you while you're having a meal and it's like this this personal audience with a guide and like ask questions and chat about things and it it was really nice and it wasn't just like oh one special meal every meal breakfast lunch dinner every meal breakfast as well yes yeah yeah it's just like i think it's a great moment and the guides really enjoy it to just share other you know other stuff or like you know and it's just to connect with everyone so I think this is one of our strengths um, and so we are yeah we're very proud of that because we are the only companies that does uh, does this um, all of our guides also go through what we call the quark academy so the quark academy is a program that is coming on top of their scientific background uh, so it ensures that they're all well trained regarding uh, safety at sea, uh, first aid or zodiac driving, so all that kind of thing. Uh, so that's why they are really considered as the best, uh, the best expedition staff in the whole um, travel industry. Um, another thing that is included, and I think Marianne already, uh, already talked about it when I had the issues with my Wi-Fi, is uh, the parka. Uh, so included, that is yours to keep after the expedition. We also provide the expedition boots for the length of the voyage. How cold is uh, Spitsbergen? So Spitsbergen is not as cold as you might think. Um, so over the summer, especially like, like spring, summer, so May, you can expect anything, like anything can happen. So expect minus three until like plus 15. Uh, usually it will be around like I'll say maybe 10 like 5 in the morning 10 in the in the afternoon if it's sunny it can go up to 15 degrees Celsius uh, but then if you're like in the zodiac for two hours you're going exploring and then the wind picks up it can be a bit chilly so that's why it's very important to have the pack um, another thing I have to tell you the rubber boots that look like they're rubber boots yeah are unbelievably comfortable they are like if you have bogs they're like bogs like they have you know the up top is kind of that fitted neoprene and inside is um like insoles they're they're not just rubber boots they're warm and they're surprisingly they're very comfortable for very, very big comforting. rubber boot looking boot yeah, yeah, They're, I love them so much that I got them uh, like here uh, for winter. 
Um, they're like, yeah, the great, great quality. Yeah. So that's it as well. Nice. Um, another thing that is included is the photography program. So we have a photography guide on board every single one of our expeditions. So this one does not, um, it doesn't change. So this guide is here really to help everyone that is not, you know, familiar with the camera or with the phone uh, and nice. like some, uh, some lectures about how to capture pictures into a polar environment. There's a few tips because of the eyes, there is a lot of reflection if it's a sunny day. Uh, so this guide uh, will be here to assist everyone uh, that has questions uh, regarding photography, just to make sure everyone gets the best picture, you know, to show family or friends after their return. Um, another thing that is included is, so I was mentioning the leadership, the lecture, but also any other activity and leisure. Uh, we absolutely enjoy to do sometimes barbecues uh, or a quiz night or other like, you know, lectures during the evening or bar talks. So all of those uh, extra activities after a long day outside are of course included. Um, the dinners, so every, every meal, so it's all inclusive. So breakfast and lunch are usually in the buffet. Um, dinner is at table, so there's like usually a four, uh, five course meal. So you choose, you pick uh, from a, a menu and then uh, alcohol is included at dinner with a selection of wine and beer. Are there, can you, um, uh, do you guys accommodate different diets, uh, vegetarian, vegan, that sort of thing? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I am, I am a vegetarian and I'm gluten free, uh, so I don't have any issues. Uh, we're finding my, my meal on board. Uh, it's best if we know in advance. So um, so that's really, that, that's the best. So like this, we can order more prior to the expedition, but absolutely, yeah, we can really uh, accommodate every type of, um, of a diet. Um, yeah, let us know in it's advance. Not kosher. I think I saw that you, you, it's not a kosher kitchen, so. Kosher and halal is complicated, especially kosher. That will not be uh, possible. Halal, we will need to know a long time in advance, um, depending, uh, depending, yeah, on the on the region. We try to source also locally. Um, so, for instance, the beer uh, will be mostly from Svalbard, from uh, Langevin, because they have like a brewery on site. Uh, but yeah, any type of uh, of uh, diet, let us know in advance, so we can uh, we can make sure to accommodate. Uh, accommodate Wonderful. You. Thank you. And another thing that is included is the photographic journal. So the photographic journal is um, a recap of all the pictures that were taken on board by the photographic guide, um, by all the pictures um, from people who actually shared the pictures, uh, oh, no. the, nice. the maps, the daily program, the list of all the wildlife uh, that we have seen during the voyage. So all of this information, no need to write it down. It will all be part of the photographic journal uh, that is available after the expedition. Cool. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the ship. Um, so I already um, talked about choosing a small expedition ship for a polar expedition uh, because it's like so, so much um, better for the wildlife and to get close uh, to landing site, like close to uh, wildlife, close to ice. Uh, but it's also uh, the best way uh, because of our small shape, we are able to bring everyone that side at the same time. So there's absolutely no waiting time on board. Everyone gets off at the same time. Um, and then there's really an onboard experience for everyone. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the ocean adventurer that is going to host the expedition next year. Uh, in the Spitsberg. So she's one of my favorite ships. She's our smallest uh, vessel. It's only 120 passengers, so super small. Um, and uh, she has, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, she has a polar class 1A. So it's right under the class of a nice breaker. So she's really the best, uh, the, the best ship to uh, get into the ice, get close to nature at its purest. Um, I put up a few pictures so you can see what she looks like uh, inside uh, with the dining room, uh, the bar. So there is also an auditorium, a library, 
uh, dinner experiences, I think to me is really amazing. Every time I go on an expedition, I bring back a few pillows. Okay. Uh, here is, uh, you know, the pictures of the, of the cabins. So I will let you uh, speak with Marianne for like, if you have questions about the cabins, uh, depending on what you have, when you, what you're looking for, but there's basically a cabin for everyone. Uh, the ship also went under a multi-million dollar renovation. Uh, and so all these public spaces and all the bathrooms are brand new, as well as some cabin categories. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention, and I think this actually really important is like Quark is really engaged toward uh, sustainability and then uh, the protection of the polar region. Um, there's, for instance, uh, something we do in the Spitsburg. Uh, we're part of an, an association called uh, Clean's Boulevard. Uh, so every time we go there, we, uh, we explain, we, we include people into the cleaning of the beaches of Boulevard. The reason, the main reason of that is, it's because of the Gulf Stream. There's a lot of like plastic uh, that is bring back from Europe, from Africa, from other parts of the world, and it end up in the beaches of Svalbard. So uh, everyone, uh, the staff and the, and the passengers are involved during the expedition to make sure we bring as much plastic as we can find on the beaches uh, to leave this environment really pristine. So that's one of our uh, engagement in this particular region. We're also part of the ECO. So the ECO is the association um, that is um, that regulates uh, the tourism industry uh, in Svalbard. So we are part of uh, this great association, and uh, we uh, really try our best to uh, you know to protect to protect the pro region. I put up a few example uh, for you. For instance, we completely eliminated uh, the single plastic from our ship. Um, and so uh, we uh, saved a lot of like plastic bottle uh, over uh, the, 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 last, uh, the last year. And actually every single passenger is receiving a re reusable water bottle on board. Um, so um, no need to bring any plastic bottle. So that's something really important uh, for us. We're very engaged um, towards that and, uh, and we have more and more initiative. If you're interested, Marianne can like, um, uh, share some some link um, about that, um, and then lastly, there is one thing I, um, I I want to share is actually one thing that uh, every single person uh, you know that I've talked to and that that comes back from the poor region, um, the one thing that every single person that travel uh, into the poor region, the one thing they have in common is the desire to go back uh, to this region, it's really something that gets you. You get mm. what we call the polar bag. I don't want to talk too much about virus, but you get the polar bag. And um, it's really about something, you know, it's to, to feel again that that's very strange feeling of being so close to something so wild. That is really uh, the one common thing that everyone, um, like, you know, um, like come back with. I'm sure um, Marianne will uh, will uh, will agree with me. Oh, absolutely. And I think the other thing that really got me in the Antarctic was once you're down there, how like natural it is because there's no buildings, there's nothing. It, it's just nature. That's it. You can't, and there's nowhere else on earth like that. Like I'm all about the weird and wonderful places on earth, but you can't find anywhere as just pure nature as you do when you go to the Antarctic. I haven't done the Arctic yet, but I will be. Um, so I can speak wholly of the Antarctic, but the, the complete absolute of just nature and nothing else. Is amazing if you see another ship it was like we saw a ship come through a bay that we were in and you've never seen people get so excited over <laughs> a ship like they took our little thingy up to the ship to like hi who are you where are you from <laughs> our guides are like <laughs> like well, I hope they're friendly <laughs> <laughs> but it's just because you don't see anybody you don't see anything and it's it's you just feel like wow there's there's still places on earth like this that they're yeah. not touched 
Absolutely. Very little touched. There's one thing I didn't mention is like we have Wi-Fi on board. Um, it's a question that we get uh, often. So like this, everyone knows, but I really encourage everyone to just to disconnect because this is one of the uh, unique, you know, occasion that you have in your life to really, you know, uh, step aside, leave your, you know, like turn off your phone and then to really reconnect with yourself and then with nature at the same time. It's really also a voyage where, you know, you work on yourself as well. You find yourself and then um, it's a wonderful ex human experience as well. Yeah, you get like, yeah, connected with the people you're traveling with um, so, so easily, so quickly. So yeah, it's really something different. So I really, I always encourage everyone to disconnect. Um, okay, well, I'm going to touch a bit on um, our, our particular trip that we have the group on, which is next May. Uh, so May 23rd, like Laura mentioned, and um, we have full details of it on the website. So I did put in the chat a link. So if you want to go and read exactly about when we're going and, and what's involved, it's all there. I did want to mention that we have some really good promotions. Um, we've worked with Cork um, to bring you pretty much the best promotions available. And um, if you're interested in a polar expedition, this might be a good one because it, these promotions really add up and you're going to save like literally thousands on it. Um, so uh, the promotions are going to be one if you've ever done a, a cork uh, expedition before you'll save five percent off um we also have the pre cruise package that she mentioned that's usually almost a thousand dollars i think it's like nine hundred dollars us and we have it included for free so that's going to be your night in oslo your flight to long urban buy in um, your return flight, your transfers, once you get there, all of that is included. Um, then we have a $250 onboard credit per person, not per cabin, so that's per person. Um, each person gets that, so that can cover uh, any number of things, I guess, yeah. um, that you might want to spend, but um, it's, it's you know, it's great considering your wine's included at dinner. So I guess, you know, if there's any extra yeah. drinks or, um, you can use it as a, in the bar. So the bar is not included. So if you want like an extra drink at the bar, you can use the Shibo credit there. Um, and also at the Polo Boutique, um, where yeah. you can and they have a great, yeah, the, the Polo Boutique, I bought all kinds of stuff. If you like outdoor wear, they have like really high-end good name brands and really good prices they had these sales on we were like it was like you know a bunch of women shopping <laughs> shopping in the antarctic we did we were like Look at that i expensive. do the same i do the same all the time <laughs> and it's all like really good name brands that you know so um that was that was awesome um, the other really good promotion that we have, it's an early booking bonus. And if you book and pay by June 15th, you save 10% on top of all of that. So the, the numbers just keep adding up. Plus through us, if you've pre-booked, you save another hundred dollars. So there's, there's all kinds of ways to actually save. And if you're thinking about doing it, this might be just the, the voyage to do. Um, if you want to chat with us and get more details, you can always send us an email or give us a call on the toll free night line at 1 749 0725. And um, we'd love to chat with you and answer specific questions and talk more about exactly what's involved. Um, and if you have any questions right now, we can open up the chat and or send it in a question and answer. And we will either just type out an answer or we can even open up your microphone so you can uh, have something to say. So either send it in the questions and answers area or the chat. And those should be links at the bottom of your page. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to put out one more poll. I'm wondering if you 
and you obviously join because you're interested in polar expeditions and I wonder if you're more interested in the Antarctic or the Arctic and so I'll launch that and in the meantime we'll do have a question um, uh, regarding issues with seasickness um yes it can be I think is the Arctic I'll let Laura speak to question. that I know the Antarctic crossing the Drake Passage is can be an issue um, I'm not sh as sure about the Arctic no, that's a great question. Um, it's definitely not the Drake Passage, uh, especially like in the in the Spitsberg. For most of the voyage, we're gonna go between like in bays or fjords, uh, between the islands. Uh, so for most of the voyage, like usually it's fine. But for the people who know that they experience already seasickness, definitely recommend them to uh, to chat with the doctor prior to the voyage. Um, so they can get like the proper medication. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not like it's, it's a big like thing as Antarctica with the Drake, but um, yeah, if the winds pick up and then it's a little bit, you know, um, bumpy, um, it's not going to be like really bumpy, obviously, because we really are on the island. But you know, for people who are already sensitive, it can be, it can be a lot. So, um, so yeah, definitely encourage people to, to, to consult the doctor if they know the experience is sickness. Otherwise, we have a doctor on board as well. So the doctor on board, uh, it's free of charge. And then also we have the medication for those who are experiences, experiencing seasickness. Wonderful. Excellent. It's nice that it's free of charge. It is, yeah. I, I, for me, it was like, uh, you know, it's uh, it was normal because, I don't know, because I'm part of the company, but then I realized I got the, the question quite often. And I realized on like most of the of the crews actually it's not included. So that's why I, I try to to tell that every time. Yeah, it is included. I was on a, another cruise, on a, a regular cruise line cruise, and I got very seasick. We had a super, super rough night and I got very seasick to the point where my husband called the doctor and they took me down and hooked me up to an IV and gave me some medication and two hours later sent me back to my cabin and that visit cost fifteen hundred dollars us oh wow so a free doctor so, <laughs> can be yeah, yeah 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 oh wow um, we have a question uh with COVID 19 um is the deposit required refundable or not refundable so we change our uh terms and condition recently uh, because before the, the COVID-19 situation, uh, depending on when people were canceling their trip, uh, they will lose their deposit or they will lose the full payment, so they have to go for the insurance. So we changed that uh, to help everyone. So if they cancel uh, 100, 120 days prior to the departure, um, they will uh, get a future travel refund credit. So meaning that we'll take whatever they have paid and then they will be able to rebook later on at a future date with no uh, penalty. Okay, and that's uh, within 120 Yes, days. exactly, yeah. So that doesn't change basically. Uh, even before, it's like every, every single like um, cruise or tour or whatever, if you cancel uh, at a certain date, uh, you're losing your, uh, your payment. And that is why actually uh, insurance, travel insurance is really important. Yes. So what we include uh, in the cost of the expedition is uh, the emergency evacuation insurance. So that is included. What it means is that if something happened on board, we'll take that person to the nearest hospital. So no charge for that. Once that person reached the hospital, their travel insurance needs to kick in. So that's why everyone needs medical insurance. And travel insurance is not mandatory, but I mean, this is like, it's a very unique destination uh, to a very unique and remote place. So really encourage everyone uh, to take an insurance. It might even not be relating to COVID-19. Some people, you know, you can get sick uh, from something else, right? Uh, so I right. recommend everyone to get um, a great insurance as well. Definitely. I think in this day and age more than ever. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely we're recommending it with everything. So that um, was so interesting poll result. It was exactly split down the middle. 50% Arctic, 50% Antarctic. All right. Ah, interesting. Yeah.
So um, for, for the COVID-19 question, if that does not answer your question, um, please feel free uh, to, to email and we'll answer um, in very specific terms about a specific trip. Sometimes it depends on which trip and what deposit exactly it is you're talking about. So um, obviously if we haven't answered your question, then please feel free to uh, email. Well, I want to thank Laura for joining us. That was very informative, very interesting. I love the pictures. Um, I can tell you, I was already quite looking forward to the May 23rd voyage, and now I'm very, very much looking forward to it. So, it's like um, a very old destination place, and I'm like, oh, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we will next week, uh, we're going to Tuscany. So we have George and Linda Myers from Cook in Tuscany are going to be our special guests. And we're going to be learning about their destination cooking school in the heart of Tuscany. Um, so please join us for that. You can find the link to it um, on our website. We'll put it up on the front page of our website uh, and take this week's down. But also there is a specific page for the Travel Talk show. So if you go to that page, you can see the links for all the upcoming shows. Uh, and we'd love to have you join us. And um, I guess mm -hmm. that's it. We will awesome. see everybody you, next week. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Laura. Thank you for Thanks, coming. Laura. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Bye. me. Bye. Thank you everybody for coming.